like to any other way, I gotta say. We've had some insane, insane comebacks. We've had some great just so single games themselves. And with Sting and Grubby going up against one another here, I I'm not expecting anything less. Yeah. All right. Well, we have started the game. Let's get in it. I am so pumped. Both these players, this is a huge moment. It really is, though. So let's get into it, guys. The first game between Grubby and Sting as we load up onto Daybreak. So, indeed, we have it spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner here as our blue Protoss. Ladies and gentlemen of Singapore, give it up for Grubby. And spawning up to the top right-hand corner here, as our Red Terran, recently joining Western Wolves. Give it up for Sting! And you know, Artosis, yes. actually, this is, this is technically my second time in Asia after being in China previously for the yeah. PWC. So it's, it's kind of, you know, all meshed into one time in Asia. Sure. And actually being here in Singapore, actually seeing how much passion that these fans have out here, is absolutely fantastic. I I know it. Uh, guys in the audience, give yourself a round of applause. You have been great today. So good. I've gotten to meet so many of these Singaporean fans and yeah. other fans from the region that have actually come here just to watch this tournament. And they have been nothing short of awe-inspiring in their passion and dedication to the wonderful, wonderful world of esports. It's been fantastic. So, guys, we are in at game number one right now. Sting is going for command center first. Actually, I'm loving this opening here on Daybreak to kick things off against Grubby. It's a good choice. If you look at what Sting has done in the past, he cheeses versus Protoss. Yep. He does weird builds all the time against everyone, but against Protoss, this guy still one one ones a lot, lots of Hellion drops, lots of crazy timing all-ins. But to open with this, this is a strong economical opening that Grubby may not be expecting here. Yep, he scouts him out, sees everything that's going on behind this. Grubby, meanwhile, will just probably play his own normal game as he's going down for his Nexus after Gateway, so not even going up to that cybernetics call. Realizing his opponent wants to play a bit more of an economical game, he's going to play one too. Well, it's a good choice. He's got to get that command center up ASAP. Look at this. Oh, He's oh, going to get oh. the... Oh, oh, no. Grubby just barely was at SCB. He knows that was a blunder. Uh, that That's not a good way to start the series. That can get under your skin sometimes. Yeah, just that probe lost there. Lack of a little bit of micro, but still Sting right now. Going to head into his opponent's main base. Have a look around. See the Cybernator score going down. As well as already seeing that Nexus. So from here on out... Sting also knows his opponent isn't going to be going for something too crazy in terms of the aggression. Yeah. So he might hold off on like that bunker for just a little bit. Well, uh, you know, Grubby right now, he's going to go normally from here, I feel. You know, he's going to go ahead, get his robo and a couple more gates up, and try to figure out what's going on. But what will Sting do? Because I feel like he always tries to take an advantage in one way or the other. Never plays straight down the center. Super early on is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It can be scary. It can be scary. Um, I mean, there's a few things that Terrans can actually go for. Like, uh, you know, even a lot of barracks early on on this map can be very strong because of the way in which the chokes actually work on Daybreak. There's two chokes for you to cover there going into your natural. Uh, so you can send Marines around the side in long way and actually really catch your opponent off guard sometimes. That is so true. And with these this third barracks going up, I wonder if Sting's going to do the old school style of walking your Marines around the map and trying to get in behind your opponent who may not have enough time then to micro with his stalkers to defeat those marines easily to try to get you know maybe get a sentry kill a few probe kills that type of thing yeah anything that you can grab there with just minerals even if it's just probes which technically yes cost minerals but they're also the opportunity cost of them mining as well all of these little pickoffs that you can get with marines is so nice for the terran and meanwhile we have him going for that bunker just keeping himself nicely bolstered yeah all right, so uh, Grubby is going into three gates while Sting kind of staying a little bit normal. Yeah, he's making a lot of Marines right now, but he's gotten his two gases, getting that tech lab as well, even getting a bunker. Oh. So he's playing it a, a, 
a little bit more normal than we're used to seeing from him. I love this rallied marine. This is something a few of the European Terrans do, uh, but it's just such a good way of keeping an eye on what's going on down there. It's 50 minerals cost. Who really cares about yeah. that? As opposed to knowing if your opponent's going to get some crazy, crazy aggression, put a probe down there with some pylons. That's a very good point, I have to say. And even if a probe goes into scout, you can catch him and perhaps deny a scout of a possible third base that you may have snuck up yeah. quickly or something like that. Yeah, it's a very, very good point. So right now, back at home, Grubby just going for the Robo. He wants that observer and he wants to see what his opponent's doing back at home. He wants to see, you know, when engineering bays are going down. He wants to see if his opponent's teched up to starport yet, if he's really rushing to that. He also wants a good idea of the barracks count as well, just so he can keep himself also quite nicely stable. Yeah. Right, well, Grubby getting a couple more gases, getting his Observer as well right now. He has five Stalkers already, so he's playing it really, really safe at the moment. And I wonder if he's going to go into Twilight Council because of this. You know, when you get uh, that many Gateway units early on, a lot of times you want to get the good upgrades for them, whether it's Blank, get some Charge, yeah, yeah. and then tech up to High Templars. But we're going to have to wait and see. Oh, a double Forge mm. coming down for Grubby. Well, I mean, with that double forge, you can almost guarantee that that eventually is going to be followed up by a Twilight Council in around the two or three minute mark once yeah. those upgrades start pumping. So he's getting a Robo Bay. He's playing this so stereotypically in terms of Protoss versus yeah. Tarim. And as such, I mean, it's a great way to play it, right? Double forge, yeah. get those upgrades going. It's, it's a nice way. Yeah, and in fact, ooh, nice force here. He doesn't want him to go up and see that there's actually Colossus Tech and Double yeah, Forge yeah. on the way. So, you know, with that, he's going to have a very stable opening, but he's going to have to decide, does he stay on Colossus or does he switch it up immediately off off of one Colossus yes. into Psy Storm? Because and that is the big choice. Yeah, and the cool thing about that is, is as the Protoss, you can even just say, nope, I'm going to hold off Thermal Lance for a bit. I'm going to show you the one Colossus. You're going to start producing Vikings. Yes. And then that mind game becomes so, so evident in if your opponent is going to overproduce any more than four, six Vikings at that point. Or even the four or six is kind of an overstatement as well, actually. Yeah. And, yeah, in fact, against one unranged Colossus, you probably, yeah. I mean, if you get two Vikings, I'm almost surprised. Yeah, I yeah. feel like the Medivacs are actually more worthwhile. So uh, we'll see what he does there. He's already got that Colossus halfway done, adding some more gateways as well, starting to put up some pylons to see any incoming drops. And this is where it gets exciting, guys, ah, right we here. We're going to have Sting moving out in a moment. He's going to figure out what Grubby has. And then he's going to make his choice. Does he make another command center? Or does he throw up another starport to maybe try to hit a kill timing? Yeah, I mean, Stingy is moving out right now. He's going to move into the middle of the map. But chances are, as soon as he sees that first Colossus, he'll turn right back around. He has two options. Either control phenomenally, snipe out the Colossus, or just turn around and go home. Because yeah. if you don't, then you are going to get slaughtered by the Colossus. That is right. All right. So right now, Grubby is just turtling pretty hard here. And that's going to be fine because Sting isn't going for any more economy. He hasn't added anything else, such as another command center in his third base area. So, you know, he is just powering up with a big army right now. Now, when he sees the Colossi, will he add the second starport? I feel like he will. I feel like he's yeah. maybe going to go for that very Viking heavy attack. Now, you're right. I. It, just watching the way Sting has played this out and how he was playing in the TSL4 as well, it sort of kind of makes sense, right? He's an aggressive player. He likes to be in an aggressive stance. He likes to put his opponent on the back foot. And right now he's moving out. He's actually macroed so well off these two bays. Four to supply up almost on yeah. Grubby. Uh, Grubby is spreading himself in terms of the upgrades and all of the buildings, but still, this is going to be a little difficult. Yeah, Thermal Lance not quite done. Oh, Grubby losing a few units here almost for free. But Sting has to be careful of these force fields starting to push in a little bit. And at home, he's adding his second starport. So Sting has yeah. made his decision. He's going to make a lot of Vikings, but will he do the SCV pull with it? And that could come to fruition here. We have Grubby for now just poising himself, trying to get himself in a defensive mind location. With 2-2 two -two on the way, if that actually, if the d push is delayed by that time, then he's going to have a really, really nice base for his upgrades, and his army is going to be considerably stronger as well with those zealots tanking so much damage. Well, you know, Grubby right now, how much scouting does he really have around the map? Wow. He hasn't seen if there's going to be a third. He doesn't really have an observer out there to see what's going on. Yeah. So, you know, I feel like Ooh. what he has to do right now is add a, a, a Templar Archives, but hold on 
This is a big draw. Oh, there's a cannon already there. Sting realizes he pulls back. Grubby knew it was coming as well. He moved his stalkers all. He positioned them for just a little second there. Meanwhile, we have three Vikings on the way at any given time right now for Sting. So he's producing a very, very strong counter offensive to what we're seeing here from Grubby right now. And Grubby, I feel at this point, has to switch all, but that drop is actually going to be able to breach. Yeah, that drop is coming into Grubby's main base right now. And this is an issue because Grubby's main army is down here. Well, that drop is doing huge damage going after that robotics that had a Colossus halfway done. Uh-oh, this is a huge amount of damage being oh. done to Grubby. Oh, he's actually going to evacuate those Colossi. Could have potentially been caught out of position by that bio, but he decides to play safe. He decides to play cool. He knows he has his third command center. There's always that sketchy moment for the Protoss where you're bringing yeah. the Colossus back from the front. They go there quicker because they can cliff walk, and then sometimes the drop can snipe them out, but it didn't happen here. No, it did not. You know what? This The way Grubby's playing this, he actually went up to eight gates and was making a Colossus. I think he was going for an eight gate four Colossus timing, but losing that, that very important robo, he started charge, he's getting 3-3, three, three, and he's going for that Templar Archives. Grubby, for certain right now, is behind. Yeah, he really is. He needs to try and somehow recuperate his losses here. It's kind of a little difficult with Sting having such a big army right now. He has seven medevacs, 24 marauders, and 39 marines all going up to 43 right now. So Storm is on the way. He's getting 3-3. And I guess the timing is where Storm finishes and Charge finishes to, for him to try and really, really ramp up some pressure. I, I do wonder if he's going to go in for that attack. I could see Grubby staying uh, back and just saying, all right, you yeah, know, Colossus... Yeah. Perfect upgrades, Psy Storm. Maybe uh, he takes another Nexus. He is taking the third already, of course, but he could take that fourth, set up a good perimeter to stop drops, yeah. and yeah. play the long macro game. It's true, but I think I think realistically looking at it, unless Sting has as phenomenal like late game TVP as like Empire Happy, for example, in 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 the European scene, then it's gonna get worse and worse for Sting. So I feel as if he needs to make something happen when he's maxed out right now. He's yeah. crewing a bank, and if he can put on some hurt against Grubby here, he'll be in a much better position than letting it go. That is for certain. All right, he is moving around right now. He's making this Ghost Academy at home. Getting a couple more command centers. By the way, his 2-2 is going to finish after the 3-3 three, three Grubby. So he's going to be down in upgrades no matter what. But this may not be the best time to actually hit. Mm, that storm is finishing up in just a little second here. I think he might be able to get the cancel on that mm. Nexus. And that is going to be a big wow. deal here. Sting moving around, poising himself, doing a, such a good job of limiting Grubby right now. Well, this is looking rougher and rougher for Grubby. I mean, he's got his size storm now. He's about to have 3-3. Three, three. This is the time he needs to move out and do something against Sting's army. Yeah, he does. He does. He really does. There's a Zealot now moving out, trying to spot exactly what's going on here. A few more Stalkers moving down to try and claim his third once again. But you know you're in a bad situation when you're trying to claim a third around the 17-minute mark here against yeah. the Terran, who has already had the third and has a fourth and fifth command center landing. Wow! Yeah, he has not even scouted this yet. <gasps> so this is a big issue right now. Grubby and another force cancel. I I'm feeling more and more like Grubby just has to go all in with this army. Yeah, Grubby is just so far behind right now. He tries to throw Storm's force fields and everything to deal with this. And the, actually, the longer this goes on right now for Grubby, because he's in such an economical deficit, once these ghosts come out, it, and then this mid to late game that we currently experience then switches in the favor of Sting. And Grubby, unless he can get the economic going, is going to be in a terrible spot. He certainly is. All right, he's maxed out right now, Claris. He's moving mm, out. There's no longer a contain. This next engagement is so likely to determine the outcome of this game. Grubby has seven high templars and three colossi. Ghosts are just now popping out for his opponent, so let's see how this oh, goes. He's catching a lot of those zealots very, very quickly there. The SCV's coming off the line as well. He just wants to bring down those Colossus. If he can do, he should be in a good shape. But actually, there's not that many Vikings left over, and the zealots trying to tank as much as they can do. But they're all pinned up against the planetary fortress here. That planetary fortress dealing out so much damage, so close in terms of supply right now. But Grubby has to pull back. Fantastic control there by Sting. Really well done with these Archons and Sentries left. He's trying to fight, but this is way too many units, and Sting running forward snipes Ooh. that. That Colossus is off and will kill off most of the rest of his army. Grubby in a terrible spot. At this point, he's only mining off of one base. Chasing him down right now with that bio army. Technically, both players don't have too much of an income here. 47 workers to 60. But right now, I'm all nice. Storm, they're actually trying to pull Grubby back into this. So actually, 
47 SCVs across this many bases is really not that much. No, it is pretty low. You're right. But he's got how many command centers now? He just went up to one, two, three, four, five, six, something. I don't know. It's, it's a, a lot of, mules, of command man. centers, okay? <laughs> he has planetaries up as well, so he can't really be attacked because all the Colossi are dead. And Sting is going to be able to regain his economy, whereas Grubby going to have a harder time of it. Yeah, it really is. I mean, there is that potential that it could stabilize. Nice snipes. They're actually catching one of the high tempo. Nice feedbacks as well, draining all of the energy. Grippy feels like he might have to push in at that point with getting that advantage, but still there's too much bio there. He can't push in against that with not really that much uh, AoE damage. Seriously, he keeps warping in charge lots, which are obviously a very good and powerful unit in the matchup, but with that, he has to make high Templars, and those high Templars are getting sniped over and over and over. He needs splash damage to actually connect, and if yeah, he can't yeah. do it, he will die. Yeah, the Grubby here has... N he. N He's trying to stabilize. He's trying to grab himself that income. Meanwhile, Sting uh, back at home. He's getting his 3-3 three, three out very soon. He's mixing in more and more ghosts. And as that count rises, as that potential for, you know, Cloak comes in, and the fact that Grubby actually only has one Observer, if he can snipe that out, Cloak ghosts become a real, real pest in the big engagements. That's right. Oh, my God. A nice run up and snipe here by Sting. Grubby warping in more units, but I don't know if it'll be enough. There's a lot of medevacs here. And it looks like this army is going to be picked off. Grubby's supplies falling below 100. Yeah, just not enough AoE damage at all. The Zealots were good and dandy in terms of tanking, but when it comes to the DPS, there you go. GG for game number one. Sting takes that 1-0 lead. I tell you, Sting playing against his own style that we've seen previously in tournaments, doing a great job there in game one against Grubby really did guys so let's send it over to the analysis desk where they can give us a little bit of a rundown as to what happened right there so a really a fantastic game number one there sting going one nil up over grubby and uh that was that was actually a pretty entertaining game one bliss why don't you talk us through uh, the openings that were used and the kind of builds that our players were trying to go through so sting started off with a command center first and then grubby couldn't get any units across the map so far so fast because it was daybreak it's a very long rush distance yeah so he decided to take probes off gas and then go for an axis faster himself sure and then sting followed up with a two racks and grubby probably thought that there was pressure coming after the two racks uh after the 15 next uh 15 command center yeah because sure. uh well he knows that sting is a very aggressive player so he overmade stalkers which delayed his tech by a lot <laughs> and uh, we actually saw um, a little bit later on in the game as well there was a, a really nice attack sort of coming in towards the natural and then also simultaneously a big drop in the main pig you saw that and uh, that was a pretty big moment there that was really really perfect uh, as we were watching that blisk was saying it would be really nice if he picked up and dropped here while hitting at the front yeah uh, and sting just did it perfectly he went in he sniped the robo he didn't overextend though he sniped the robo while pressuring at the front taking out some zealots and then picking up and escaping without losing anything getting ahead for absolutely no loss. So that was really fantastic play from him there. Yeah, and from that point onwards, of course, Sting, uh, do you think he was keep, do you think it's better to keep up the aggression at that point? Do you sit back and sort of just keep going? Like what, what happened from there? How did the game evolve from Sting's point of view? I think he played it really nicely. He actually delayed his Vikings for a very long time in order to just have this big, massive bio out on the map. And he was just constantly out there <laughs> making sure Grubby was uncomfortable, going in and sniping the third base once he was maxed. And at this point, Grubby, he had the tech advantage. He had Colossus, he had Psystorm. He had this great composition with 3-3 three, three against just the 2-2 two, two upgrades. And yet, and yet he was forced into doing a very, very big counterattack because he was on two base against Sting, who was just covering his side of the map with expansion. So if we hop into the replay now, we can just take a look at this one key engagement where Grubby counterattacked and had to do fatal damage with that attack. All right, so, oop. Oh, oh slow that go. down. And here he comes in with this engage. There's only one ghost out on the map, but Grubby whiffs two storms completely there. He only has four storms total, and then his zealots are stuck behind each other in this engage. The planetary fortress finishes mid-engage, and a lot of the zealots waste their time attacking that. Meanwhile, Sting's spread is absolutely perfect in this engagement, and he just cleans up Grubby's superior army through perfect positioning and control. That's a great point you have. And I actually want to touch on something you just mentioned, Pig, because Blisk, you mentioned this earlier on in the game. Sting got to 200-200. 
pretty quickly there in that game, and then you looked at it and thought, hang on a second, this composition's a little bit off. Yeah, exactly. He maxed out really fast with uh, a lot of bio units, but then he was lacking on ghosts, and Grubby already had so many high Templars with Storm, with 3-3 three, three out, <laughs> and with no ghosts against a uh, Protoss army with higher upgrades, um, it is very hard to fight as a Terran. So that attack was actually very, very dangerous from Grubby, but he didn't use the one thing that was uh, to his advantage at that point, which was the Storms, as well as his Zealots, which he attacked into a planetary fortress. Just Sting positioned so well, dodged so many Storms, and that's how he probably won the game. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for game number one here from the analysis test. Let's get into game number two with Kalaris and Artosis. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Some good analysis there. We're going to be going into map number two. It's going to be Antigua Shipyard. I feel like this map is going to be the best map for Sting against Grubby. So if Grubby doesn't pull out something special, he might have to make that huge comeback again. Yeah, and as you can see down on our little overlay here, big shout out to our um, to our sponsor, spon not sponsor, no, oh. to our um, observer, Infeza. We had it, it, it threw me off for a second there because it said hashtag Infeza, and I was like, surely that should be at Infeza. But there yes. you go, at Infeza, go follow him. He's been doing a fantastic job all tournament long. A big thank you for him to have a um, have our have our observer here. So let's jump in, guys, to game number two here on Antigua Shipyard between Grubby and Sting. Spawning down in our southern position here as our blue Protoss. Currently one game down in this best of five. Singapore, let me hear you for Grubby. And spawning up in the north position here as our red Terran after an extremely strong opening game here uh, on Daybreak. Now we are on Antigua Shipyard. Give it up for Western Wall Sting. You know, this this map uh, in TVP, I feel like a Terran can play here with an aggressive standard play yeah. and have great results. That's just, true. Just fantastic results. And normally we talk about how Sting just never plays standard, but he did last game pretty much. You know, he yeah, stayed yeah. pretty darn standard, pretty, pretty by the book. And I feel like that threw Grubby off. He was ready for anything. He was scared that Sting was going to all in him or something. But here Sting is again playing this more standard style, getting his command center first. Yeah, yeah. And Grubby's going to be thrown for a loop when he scouts. He's going to be like, what? It, you're not going to 1-1-1 one, one, one me? No, exactly. And, you know, that was so evident in game number one via uh, exactly what happened in terms of when Grubby was trying to claim his third. Mm -hmm. His his third, his timing of his third was all, he's just a little bit late every single time. And, you know, he... By that time, Sting had just a phenomenal army to actually push out and keep denying it. You, There's a weird dynamic in PVT where you need to actually have that third up and running yeah. a little bit before in order to really kind of create those defensive locations. Well, hopefully Grubby uh, can learn from that last game a little bit. Oh, almost gets that SCV, not quite. Uh, he will continue to harass. Hopefully he won't lose the probe this game. He really needs to stay on top of his scouting intel. And that's another thing that went a little bit wrong. He wasn't spending any robo time on uh, observers. So he wasn't actually yeah. able yeah. to check, hey, when is your third timing? Or, hey, what's your tech look like? You know, he just, he lost, uh, like, one observer had one more, and that was it. Yeah, this is so true. And for now, coming on to Antigua here, I mean, what does Grubby do, Artosis? Where does he go? Does he just continue to play that standard, but sees this command center first and then says, well, you know, I'm going to take my third base a little quicker than I was doing on game number one? Or how, do, how does he play this angle? Well, this one is a little bit more of a tricky map. Yeah. Uh, you know, for Grubby, he can't really go double forge Colossus. That's not very good here, to be honest. Uh, he could go like a single forge Colossus with mm -hmm. quick blink, something like that. Could go right into Twilight Tech. But he has to make some sort of choice like this instead of just the standard turtley type play he did before. And this is exactly pretty much what Blisk was outlining on our analysis desk there. The fact that, you know, the rush distances here are a little bit less than they are on Daybreak. So that Zella actually wanders over, has a little bit of a look around, a bit of a poke, sees if it can get any damage, but is unable to do so right now. I mean, it's not entirely to what Blisk was saying, but hello, Twilight Council. Not surprised to see this. It's a good choice for this map. And... 
Mm. In fact, it's off one gate. There is a possibility we're going to see him go into super fast Blink Observer, which normally is reserved for, well, PVZ. But on this map, you can get up there in the base and stop Stim. And if you stop yes. Stim one oh. time against Terran, one time, you have a big lead. God, you're, it's so right. You're so right with that. I mean, sometimes there are one base blink plays that go for that kind of pressure. And then if they fail, you don't have anything to fall back on. Mm -hmm. But after somebody's gone for a command center first into that kind of thing as well, that timing opens up itself a little bit. So this blink play could be very, very punishing oh, depending oh, oh. on where uh, he puts his buildings. And he is going for that build. Mm. This is a great build. It's the perfect opportunity based upon what Grubby scouted and how quickly he expanded. This is so doable and not at all all in. All he has to do is maneuver his observer correctly so he can blink in and out a few times. It'll slow down his opponent so much. I just, I can't even tell you, this is a perfect choice by Grubby. Perfect choice. Very, very nice indeed. Right now we have a bunker going down at the front here for Sting. Not going to negate too much here as that Stim begins right now. Ooh, that one Stalker. You almost never lose those Stalkers at the beginning. And if he'd have lost that, that would have been a big deal. It's a huge deal with the type of unit composition he's going yep. with. You know, he needs these Stalkers all alive. Now, we do have a move out here by Sting, and it looks like he's going to walk around the Watchtowers. Mm. Oh, this is a huge amount of Marines. This... There's a possibility this could turn bad for Grubby if he doesn't see it. But if he does, he can dismantle oh. the Marines. Oh, does that pylon sit on the no. high ground? No. Oh, no. okay. It's too no, far it's off. Not. Okay. So, well, you know what? He's... Wow. This Sting's move here. Did it go through? Oh, it oh. oh he saw it. He saw it. And Grubby is going to be able to outmicro oh. this. Oh, my God. Oh, those... <laughs> oh, you have to be very careful when going through a brush like that right now. We have Grubby still holding strong here against us, but still Sting is so quick about getting the units out and rising in terms of supply. Yeah, this is a very tricky build he's chosen here, and in fact, doing a great job utilizing that smoke screen Ooh. so effectively, something we rarely see. Yep, and right now he's going to try and control the middle watchtower here. That Zealot's going to annoy him. The Stalkers are still pursuing. There's not that many Marines left. Yeah. Dover actually here. This has been a pretty cost-effective trade for Grubby right now, and he blinks up into his opponent's main with two Stalkers here, going for the engagement. He actually blinks up with everything, a nice shift blink, and he's going to start doing some damage. Yeah, he has got to start doing some damage. In fact, those SCVs coming down, and Grubby's standing in kind of the wrong spot to blink out, and here we go, going back down here, going to have to blink out. And you know what? He's flanking with the Marines. Oh. Beautiful move here by Sting. Oh, it's so good indeed. He gets so many more Stalkers than he would have done originally. What a fantastic play. And right now, with Grubby down to four Stalkers here against 20 Marines and two more. You others. know what? The, uh, Sting is making every right move yeah. with his build orders. He's just, I mean, Grubby's choice, perfect. But Sting did exactly what he needed to do to stop it in every single way. Stalled it out, flanked it. Oh. Awesome play by Sting. Grubby for now still blinking back, trying to keep himself well defended. He can't go for any more aggression right now because Sting just has these angles covered. He's going to go for a third base, get that Robo Bay down, as well as more Stalkers on the way. I'm assuming he's going to drop a scan to kill this Observer off. It's too uh, obvious it's there. Yeah, you know, he, oh, Grubby Ooh. can't be losing all these Stalkers. He's got to be careful about that. And a lot of Stalkers go down. He does eliminate the army, though. So that's good, at least. Yeah, meanwhile, though, yeah, we only actually have only five Marauders and five Marines still out. So that kind of equalizes things up a little bit in terms of Sting wanting to maybe move out. I'm pretty sure that Missile Turret's actually in range of that Observer right now. now that I look yeah, good. I'm sure I can see that. Yeah, yeah, he's walking right over. So, uh, you know, right now, Grubby, what does he do from here? He tries to hold. He's stalling with the Blink Stalkers as much as he possibly can. But how much stalking can uh, stalling can you do with just four? How much stalking, man? How much stalking? Not a lot of stalking either, to be perfectly frank. This no. is this is a very small army. It doesn't have any real upgrades. There's plus one on these marauders with medevacs, so he's gonna have to back up and and just zone perfectly here. Yeah, Sting is looking to move out into the middle of the map right now. Almost 25 supply up on his opponent. He will potentially have to pull back once he sees that first Colossus pop, and that's really gonna be the linchpin of Grubby's defenses here as the infamous scouting factory comes along and sees pretty much everything. Sees the Robo, didn't see the Robo Bay just yet though. So uh, Sting is still poising himself in the middle of the map, trying to deny that third base. Ooh, this actually and might go down. Yeah, that third base, uh, it looks like it may. And in fact, Ooh. targeting out this Colossi so quickly, it does not have Thermal Lance. So this is an issue for him. 
and he just doesn't have the hit points. He doesn't have the tanking. Oh, he goes down. Nice move there by Sting. Really sniping that off so, so well. Right now, the Sash thing to rely on all of his gateway units to really deal with this. He pulls Probs off the line as well. Grubby feels is in a bit of trouble here, as right now, uh, there's another Colossus on the way. Will it be able to save it off? He tries to focus it down. It doesn't take it down with two of those volleys, and he comes back for the snipe. And while he has killed this off, there's more units on the way, and he might even blink in. Oh, God, this is getting really bad for Grubby. His supply is so low for sure that third Nexus is going to fall. And with it, Grubby's hopes of taking this game. God, Sting just knows when to push out and when to exploit these third bases. Exactly as Grubby's third base finishes, the Marines and Marauders arrive to do the damage. And he only had one Colossus with no Thermal Lances. So now Grubby's still on the back foot here. He's trying to deal with what he can with these Zealots and Stalkers. But still, so much bio still pulling off the blind once again with these probes. They're stuck behind the Stalkers. This is desperate.